Chapter 9 Friday Night I went back home and passed by Dana's house to give her the passepartout. That night I didn't sleep. I thought about the next day, about Paul's decision, about Clyreg. Apollo mewed in the darkness. On Friday morning, I got up early. I felt very tense. The day proceeded slowly. During the morning, the principal came to remind us of the meeting. Don't forget that this evening there's the family teachers meeting. I hope to see all of you with your parents. Sure, I thought. And during the meeting, one of your teachers will try to kidnap two students and take them to a mysterious planet. When the school day finished, I went to the rainbow for some ice cream with Paul and Dana. Paul told Dana about his decision. She was obviously very surprised and disappointed. Those moments we passed together were very special. I will never forget that last afternoon with Paul. Our friendship seemed stronger than before. We felt more united because of our separation. Finally, after dinner, my parents and I walked to school. We sat down in the auditorium and the meeting started. At one point, I saw Mr. Adams get up and go towards Dana's family. I saw him whisper something to Dana's parents and then to Dana. She got up from her chair and followed him. Together, they walked towards Stephen's family. Steve is another one of my classmates. I'm sure Clyreg chose him because Paul was absent. In fact, I noticed him looking for Paul. Steve, Dana, and Mr. Adams left the auditorium. So he didn't choose me, I thought. I looked at my watch, 9.05, 25 more minutes. Suddenly I had an irresistible impulse. I wanted to see what was happening. I got up. Jenny, where are you going? My mom asked. I- I'm going to the science lab. Don't worry, I said, and I quickly walked away. The door of the lab was closed. Inside I heard Mr. Adams opening the fridge. I imagined his anger. Oh no! He exclaimed. Where is it? Where is what? Clyreg? Dana asked. Are you talking about the hypnotizing spray? You lost, Clyreg, she exclaimed triumphantly. W- what? You know. Clyreg was shocked. What spray? What are you saying? said Steve, who didn't know anything about it. What courage Dana has, I thought. Mr. Adams had the power to electrocute her if he wanted. It was stupid to make him angry. But in the end, it seems that Paul was right. Clyreg wasn't really a bad alien. Well, I don't think you need us anymore, Dana said. The door opened and she walked out. Come on, Steve. Everything's okay. Let's go back to the meeting. Then Clyreg came out. He seemed confused and helpless. I looked at my watch. Clyreg, it's 9.17. Go. Don't miss your spaceship, I said, almost with compassion. Clyreg looked at me, even more surprised. Then he went to the fire escape exit and ran away. At that moment, I thought of Paul. I followed Clyreg down the fire escape stairs and out of the building. Our school is very close to the old airfield, so Clyreg and I reached it at 9.24. The spaceship was already there, waiting for Clyreg. Its portal was open, but all the lights were off. The aliens from Mitrax didn't want anyone to see them. Paul was there, too. When he saw Clyreg, he ran towards him. Clyreg, listen, I want to come with you. Take me with you. You you could study me. I know you won't hurt me. Clyreg was literally shocked. Come then, Paul. Hurry, he said, recovering from his amazement. Paul, I shouted. Jenny. He ran to me and we embraced. This crazy adventure has finally finished. Fortunately, everything ended well for everyone, Paul said. Think about me sometimes, I said. I'll always think of you. And remember, I'll be back. Paul! Clyreg shouted. He was on the stairs of the spaceship. The portal is closing. 
Have fun in me tracks, you space lover, I said, laughing and crying at the same time. Paul went up the stairs and the portal closed behind him. The spaceship lights turned on and it silently went up into the dark night sky. I watched it disappear into the blackness. Then I hurried back to school. My parents were still at the meeting with everyone else. No one seemed to suspect anything. Dana and Steve sat calmly near their parents. I, too, went back to my mother and father, smiling innocently. Today, six months have passed. Everyone at school now knows the truth about Mr. Adams, although not everyone totally believes my story. We have a new science teacher. Her name is Miss Lundberg, and for the moment she seems normal. Dana and I have been to visit Mr. Stone a few times, and his relationship with our class has really improved. He seems a happier person, and this pleases me a lot. Steve is now Dana's boyfriend, and they make a nice couple. I still have the hypnotizing spray. I keep it hidden, although sometimes I use it on Fred when he needs a bath. Apollo is now a member of our family. Fred is a little jealous of him, but they're usually friends. I told my parents the entire story. They seemed to believe me, especially because no one can find Paul. In the beginning, his father looked for him, but he soon stopped worrying. Sometimes Dana and I talk about Clyreg and our adventure. We remember Paul. On many evenings, alone in my garden, I look up at the sky and think about him. Good night, Paul, wherever you are. See you soon.